This video is a response to a very long string of text comments left by an atheist user Blue Dragon 94 on my video Why Are There Atheists? You should probably have watched that video before this one, though it's not strictly necessary. The reasons I'm doing this video are twofold. First, it was much too cumbersome to try to respond in text to such a long set of comments. Second, I think these are pretty much the standard responses from the atheist community at large and not particularly unique to this person. And as a result, I think it can be helpful for both atheists and Christians who haven't heard good responses to these objections. I'll read excerpts of the text comments by Blue Dragon and then give my responses. Note that I'll be copying and reading the text word for word and mostly not editing it for grammatical correctness. Due to the sheer volume of comments, I'll probably have to make this a multi-part video. So just watch as you have the time and interest to do so. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't really matter how improbable an event is. What matters is that it happened or not. The chances of winning the jackpot on the lottery is slim to none, but eventually it happens. This misses the point entirely. The nature of this response implies that we have some kind of random universe generator out there spinning out countless numbers of universes, and we just happen to be in the right one. I cannot be emphatic enough when I say that there is absolutely nothing scientific about this belief. It is purely metaphysical, completely unproven, and even unprovable, and it exists only to attempt to circumvent the issue of improbability without referring to God. Even if one grants that a random universe generator did exist, how would one then explain the existence of that, which itself would have to have been fine-tuned by some designer for the purpose of generating universes? It's an empty rebuttal. Your usage of the word chaotic is misleading and slanderous in your usage. There's nothing chaotic with the way hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. Just because the complexities of the universe is complicated doesn't necessarily imply chaos. Furthermore, order doesn't imply a grand designer, either as a grand designer could just as, as easily choose to create something chaotic. When I refer to chaos, I refer to what might be expected in the absence of a designer, not what we do observe. We do observe complex order in the universe, and this cries out for an explanation which materialists are completely unable to provide. Saying that a designer could have just as easily designed chaos is a red herring. It's irrelevant that, designer, that a designer hypothetically could have designed chaos intentionally. That's not what we observe. We observe order, and there's no scientific way to explain how complex functional order can have a source in anything other than intelligence. Science, as well as common sense, tell us that in the absence of intervening factors, order tends to degenerate to chaos, not the reverse. That's why we have to work and toil to make our complex creations a reality, and indeed to merely keep ourselves alive. Skyscrapers and robots don't build themselves. It requires intentional, intelligent agents to make them a reality, and without upkeep they fall back into chaos. The same is true of the universe at large. Surely if a god existed, it might be an evil god, depending on your definitions of evil and god. Well, yes, technically, if you can adjust your definition of god however you see fit, then that might be true. But that's irrelevant. If evil is to have any objective meaning whatsoever, then it must be defined as whatever goes against the will of the supreme authority of the universe, which is the one true God. If there is no supreme authority, then there is no evil. Let's just assume for a second that God did in fact exist. Did God not create the world with omniscience of the future? Did not God create the world with the omnipotence to do whatever he saw fit for the world in your theology? That being the case, did not God create the world with the knowledge that it would descend into evil? If that is the case, and God has every intention and ability to fix evil in the world, but hasn't, then isn't God to blame for the evil? He created every evil man, knowing full well that evil person would not change, and nothing except interve direct intervention would stop that evil person from doing evil, and yet God doesn't intervene? How can you say God isn't responsible for evil in the world at that point without exercising extreme cognitive dissonance? Whatever that is. Explain to me how an omniscient and omnipotent God 
isn't directly responsible for his creation, especially with the exact knowledge of the outcome of his creation. If I make a machine that will kill many people, and I know it will kill people, am I not at least in part responsible for those deaths? Apparently not, if God is exempt. Okay, see my video response to Taylor X04 on omnipotence for a more complete treatment of this topic, as well as Telemontros' video, both of which I'll link here. In a nutshell, though, the answer to the problem of evil is the fact that God's nature is non-contradictory, and it would be a contradiction to have both free will and no possibility for evil. God values human free will and thereby has overarching justification in allowing evil to exist. In order for us to have a genuine loving relationship with our Creator, it must be freely chosen. God does know our cho choices, not being bound by the dimension of time, but that does nothing to change the fact that they were indeed our choices and not His. God also promises ultimate justice, rewarding those who choose good and punishing those who choose evil. This is exactly what we would expect from a benevolent God. You say we ignore that the, God, that the doc caused pain to help you. You ignore that the doc could have prevented the pain from the beginning and taught you the lesson at the same time due to omniscience and omnipotence that God supposedly has but refuses to use because he works in mysterious ways. Um, this is regarding my uh, analogy in my previous video about a doctor. Uh, but no, here you're making the mistake of expecting God to contradict his own nature and go against the laws of logic. Without free will, we are worthless automatons. But with free will, we must have the ability to choose evil over good. God allows those who choose to follow him to suffer temporarily because he has overarching justification for it. Most people understand that we are made stronger and wiser by going through hardship, and this also separates those who choose to follow God and have faith in him from those who will not. Why do we need an objective way of claiming things to be evil? People have lived and died well enough with subjective notions of evil and immortality just fine. What's wrong with subjectivity? Well, everything is wrong with subjectivity. Subjective evil is equivalent to no evil at all. It's a meaningless concept because what you decide to call evil, I could just as easily decide to call good. It devolves into a simple description of what an individual does or does not like or prefer. That's not what evil is. If all we have is subjectivity, then everything meaningful about the human experience is lost. Murderers are not meaningfully different from those who selflessly give to others. All value judgments become meaningless. That view is self-evidently false. I lack the belief because there is no evidence. By evidence, I mean empirical evidence. Anecdotes are not empirical, neither are near-death experiences. There is plenty of evidence, but you and others like you ignore it and dismiss it because you aren't willing to deal with it. You, for whatever reason, have set yourself against God and will not acknowledge what is staring you right in the face. Furthermore, when you say anecdotes, by which you mean eyewitness testimony, are not acceptable as evidence, you are being irrational. Even in a court of law, eyewitness testimony is considered to be evidential. Your decision to dismiss the testimony of those who have experienced God is arbitrary and bases solely on your bias. Near-death experiences, too, are quite evidential, since many of them completely defy any materialistic explanation. If materialism falls, atheism is severely weakened. Do your research, and you'll discover this.